and uh, wherever you're at. Jesus, I'll never forget what you've done for me. Jesus, I'll never forget how you set me free. Jesus, I'll never forget how you brought me out. Jesus, I'll never forget, no, never. Jesus, I'll never forget what you've done for me. Jesus, I'll never forget how you set me free. Jesus, I'll never forget how you brought me out. Jesus, I'll never forget, no, never. How can I forget what you've done for me? Hey, how can I forget how you set me free? How can I forget how you brought me out? Jesus, I'll never forget, no, never. How can I forget when way down in Egypt land, how you brought me out with your mighty outstretched hand? I'm the brand of sin and you set me free. Jesus, I'll never forget, no, never. Jesus, I'll never forget what you've done for me. Jesus, I'll never forget how you set me free. Jesus, I'll never forget how you brought me out. Jesus, I'll never forget, no, never. Jesus, I'll never forget what you've done for me. Jesus, I'll never forget how you set me free. Jesus, I'll never forget how you brought me out. Jesus, I'll never forget, no, never. Well, it's Tuesday and God is still good all the time. And Father, we thank you for those that are tuned in, some at work, some at home, some uh, uh, on lunch break. But we know that God, even in this precarious and difficult time, that you're still God. And you said in everything, give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning us. And so we pray for the bereaved families, the sick families, the people that are stressed and those that are worried, those that are going through. Uh, we know that this too will pass, but in the meantime, we will give you praise because you are great and greatly to be praised. And you said that you inhabit the praises of your people. Thank you for a sweet Holy Spirit and every other church that's opening your name ministering to your people in such a time of crisis like this. Touch, heal, deliver, save, and set free. In Jesus' name we pray. And all of God's people said, Amen. We want to encourage you, if you have not uh, been able to give to the church, you can give your tithes and offering. You can call the church now at 773-768-HOLY. Or you can drop your tithe and offering off. You can do Givelify. You can do uh, Cash App. You can do PayPal. A lot of churches are really suffering because they did not have electronic giving. But those of you that have been faithful, I want to say thank you for what you have done. Uh, been a long time since we've seen each other, but we will be together again. And so until then, we'll be on every Tuesday at noon. And then, of course, every Thursday at 7 a.m. and every Sunday at 9 o'clock. There's some special things going on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 4 o'clock, and you just need to grab it. It'll be inspirational words, and we call them the happy hours with the bishop. Now, Father, we pray that the words of our mouth and the meditation of our heart be acceptable in thy sight. You are my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray. And we thank you for it. Amen. Uh, today I want to give a scripture at the end of our time together rather than at the beginning of our time together. And I guess I did something like that last week, but just hang with me. What's the most frustrating thing that you could remember about childhood? Now, I know in uh, Guyton's case and James Lodge's case, they got to go back further than the rest of us. But, but what's, what's the most frustrating 
aggravating thing that you could remember about childhood. I was thinking about this thing, and you know, we lived in the projects, 2330 South State Street, and uh, we lived on the ninth floor. But wherever you lived in the project, you heard the ice cream truck when it came. And I remember uh, hearing an ice cream truck come and, and asking my mama for 15 cents to buy me a dream sickle, and she gave me a quarter and a lecture about bringing um, her 10 cent back, and the elevator was broke, and I ran down nine flights of steps out to State Street, and the ice cream truck pulled off. That's frustrating. What's, what's the most frustrating, uh, aggravating thing that you could remember about childhood? Uh, you know, I, I got a lot of childhood, uh, childhood memories. I remember one, one Christmas I had asked my mama, I said, Mama, I want, I want a robot for Christmas. And, uh, you know, after waiting to Santa Claus or whoever that was, it came and I got up that morning ready to play, play my, my, my robot and, and I hit the switch and it didn't come on. And uh, I'm wondering why it's not working. And then there was an inscription that said, batteries not included. Now you gotta understand, wasn't no 24 hour stores and all that there then. So that was frustrating. What's the most frustrating thing that you could remember about childhood? Maybe you didn't miss the ice cream truck or you didn't get a gift that it didn't have the batteries that could uh, go along with it. Um, I, I, I guess one of the most frustrating things was uh, I, I was in kindergarten and uh, first grade, one of them, and I saw this girl I liked. Her name was Myra Scott. And so, you know, in those days, you didn't want to get turned down, so you send a love note and give them a multiple choice situation. I like you. Do you like me? Check the box, yes, no, or maybe so. And she wrote on that paper, no, I don't like you. That was frustrating. Who wants to be turned down by their first love? Oh, okay, I, I, I got another one, you know, we used to play uh, on the monkey bars, and every now and then when you got, when you got uh, good at it, you tried to show off in front of your friends, and, and in an attempt to swing from one monkey bar to another one, I fell and scabbed my knee, and everybody laughed at me. That was frustrating. What's the most frustrating, aggravating thing that you could remember about childhood? As I say, some of y'all got to go back a long way. But uh, I think maybe it was that time that I got an F on my report card and I reached it and made it an A and brought it home and my mama found out quickly that that was not my correct grade. And she said, go take your clothes off and go get the extension cord. And she said, I'm going to give you one to remember. And she beating me. Saying, and at the same time saying, shut up. You know, I'm going to shut up and you're beating the hell out of me. That was frustrating. What's the most frustrating, aggravating thing that you could remember about childhood? I could go on a list of other things, but the most frustrating, aggravating thing that I could remember about childhood was sitting in the middle of the floor, not bothering nobody's business, just building my blocks, and they start falling. And I didn't know why they fell. I want to talk for about 20 minutes about why blocks fall. Because here I am now, and 30, 40, I don't know how many years later, 
maybe 50. And the truth be told, blocks are still falling in my life. Got a little education, had a, 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 I was able to rub a couple of nickels together and have a little change and blocks still fall, blocks fall in relationship, blocks fall in finances, blocks fall in, in my faith, Block, blocks fall in relationship, blocks fall with your children. Has anybody here other than me have been building your blocks and they fell? I want to talk to you because I have come up with a couple of reasons why blocks fall. Number one, blocks fall when they are stacked too tall too soon. When we are in a hurry and we start building our blocks and we are not properly lining them up, trying to get it done. See, everything you do in life cannot be done instantly or in a hurry. So we build our blocks up and we build them up uh, too soon. And so something in, 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 the, in the construction of building the blocks too soon made them fall. I, I'm, I'm reminded, I got a lot of Bible here. The Bible said, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God and in the due time he will exalt you because he that exalt himself shall be brought down, but he that humbles himself shall be exalted. Too tall, too soon. Somebody told you you could sing and now you got to get paid every time you open your mouth. Too tall, too soon. You got saved yesterday, called the next day, and now you're an apostle. Too tall, too soon. Something's going to happen to us and we're going to have to realize that we can't carry these titles without work. Too tall, too soon. Fellow was on the internet the other day, and he called himself presiding bishop. He's 16 years old, and he ain't even presided over how to get out of high school yet. Too tall, too soon, and we have got to stop uh, applauding foolishness. There's a process to becoming whoever we want to become in God. There's a process in growing a business. There's a process in building a marriage. There's a process in building a structured relationship. But when we want to start real fast and start at the top, then our block's going to fall because there ought to be a system and some time between building one block and the next and build them not in a hurry, but too soon. I, I, got, I got another one. Blocks fall when they are not stacked straight. If I was at church and I had people here, I'd tell them to say, stack them straight. You know, we, we, we do some things that are, are out of line with the scriptures. I can't help but be the preacher of the gospel. Hebrews 12 and 14 say, follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Stack, stack them straight. Stack them straight. You, 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 you can't talk in tongues and ain't spoke to me. Stack them straight. Stack them straight. One of the things we have messed up in the 21st century church is that uh, we won't let the leader be the leader. So uh, the deacons run the church or somebody else run the church. And so then rather than there being uh, one vision, there's two vision, which is division. And the Bible says, write the vision, make it plain upon the tables that he that run uh, may, may read it and run or he that run and may read it. Stack, stack them straight. When, when are we going to go back to the old landmark and start stacking them straight? And stop all of this foolery in the kingdom. Stack, stack them straight. Hey, girl, you get the husband before you get the baby. Stack them straight. And we're supposed to be a people of light. And the Bible calls us a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. One who has come out of darkness into the marvelous light. And Matthew joins us and says, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify the Father which is in heaven. 
And it goes on to say, when the salt, we, we supposed to be the salt of the earth, and when the salt has left its savor, it's good for nothing but be trotted up under the foot of men. Stack them straight. All this denominational foolishness that stops us from fellowshipping and becoming a kingdom is crooked kind of building. Because at the end of the day, there will not be a Kojic heaven and a Baptist heaven and a spiritual heaven and a PAW heaven. But my mama said, all oh, God's children going to get together. So if we're going to get together in heaven, we got to get together down here. Stack them straight. Your church ain't no better than mine because you got 20,000 members. I only got two and somebody, because God is just as pleased with the man or woman that's pastoring 25 people and faithful to them as he is to the one that's pastoring 25,000. But we have the audacity to try to separate the body of Christ based upon size, based upon building, based upon popularity, based upon website, based upon uh, apps, all these things. Stack them straight. At some point, Preachers ought to be helping preachers. At some point, we have to move to the point where our musicals are not song battles. At some point, we can't have competition preaching. At some point, we got to reach out and touch somebody and help them through the darkest times of their night. Stack them straight, stack them straight. And a highway shall it be there, and it shall be called the way of holiness. Stack them straight. No, you, we used to say good morning. We used to say, how you doing? We didn't just walk past people. We used to ask the blessing over our food. Uh, we started off with Jesus' web, and we graduated to God is great. God is good. Let us thank him for our food. We went on, and, and we didn't go to bed in mom and daddy's house without saying, now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take. Stack them straight. They used to sing a song that let us all go back to the old landmark and stay in the service of the Lord. I, I used to just yearn to hear as we walked down the street and we used to have a lot of storefronts and, and them old mothers would be moaning and, and praying and, and, and they, because they, they say stuff like prayer makes me strong when I am weak and keeps me marching on. And somebody would sing a Dr. Watt and it would catch over and somebody just say, yes, Lord. And they just said, yes, Lord. And we found ourselves running to the house of prayer for prayer. But now prayer is a thing of the past and and uh, revivals on life support and, and Sunday school has been dismissed because we don't stack them straight. But scripture still say, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needed not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Stack them straight. Blocks fall because they are too tall too soon. Blocks fall because they're not stacked straight. Number three, blocks fall because an outside force knocks them down. I'm in the middle of the floor. I'm playing with my blocks. Here come my brother with a wagon and my sister with a stroller. And some outside force knocks my blocks down. I wasn't bothering nobody. I was just playing with my building blocks and they fell down because of an outside force. My brothers and sisters, I hate to be the one to be the bearer of bad news, but there's an outside force. The Bible says he goes about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. The thief comes but for to kill, steal, and destroy. And we have come, or Jesus has come that he might have life. But an outside force, we are dealing with a pan pandemic, and it's an outside force. We don't know uh, or everything there is about it, but it was taking out almost 50,000 people in the United States of America. It's an outside force. Right here in Illinois, over 2,000 people have made transitions. They've got to order extra body bags, and, and, and funeral homes have to rent extra coolers because an outside force has knocked us down. 
and the government and the governors and the mayors can't come together on when we can put this thing back together. And we must understand that after a pandemic, there's still a recovery and there's a whole lot going on and we cannot act like ain't nothing happening. We got to realize there are some outside forces that have knocked us and knocked our blocks down. In the 80s, the outside force was, was crack cocaine, and we were stealing from our mother and our father and our brothers and our sisters, and we would take it. That outside force made us have crack babies. There have been outside forces that make us go and get over-medicated. Medicated, medicated. There are outside forces that force us to drink, 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 drinks and become enumerated. They're outside forces that make us don't even like each other and don't know why we don't like each other. You know, somebody don't like you and they don't even know your name and don't like you. It's an outside force. People will, will grin in your face and then uh, slap you or stab you in the back. Now, now in this day of... Uh, and you know, I kind of think sometimes that the smartphone and the tablets uh, uh, were a blessing, but they're a curse because they divide our attention. An outside force has broken down the communication in the family because everybody's at the table and everybody's in the living room, but everybody's in their phone and ain't nobody talking to nobody. Outside force. Now we must understand that the devil does not come as we have pictured him in times past as this red man with a fork and a tail, but he operates in and, and through whomever he believes, uh, whoever will allow him. And we got to understand that we still have some power against outside force because the book says that no weapon that's formed against us shall prosper and every tongue that rises against us in judgment has already been condemned. But the outside force has been welcomed in our houses, welcomed in our communities, welcomed in our streets. We don't own anything anymore. All black people got is a beauty shop, a barber shop, uh, and a nail shop, maybe a barbecue house, when we used to have shoe stores and clothing stores, but some outside force made us think we should go and buy something from somebody else because it was a little cheaper. Outside force knocks us down. Outside force knocks us down when we look at the fact that every time Paul said, I try to do good, evil is ever present and knock down my finances, knock down my faith, knock down my relationship. Outside force could care less about two people becoming one. Outside force can care less about us building up of one another in the most holy faith. Outside force will have us uh, speak to one, one person one minute and don't speak to them in the next minute. And when we get with certain people, we tear down the same ones that we tried to build up. Outside forces are moving in. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness in high places. Outside forces can knock your blocks down, mess up your life for good. Why do blocks fall? Blocks fall because they are stacked too tall too soon. Blocks fall because they are not stacked straight. Blocks fall because an outside force knocks them down. Thank you for listening to me. I got one more. Blocks fall because they are built on the wrong foundation. You know, um, this is 2020, and I see people who try to build their whole life uh, on their job or on their popularity in the community or on their status financially. This and that. that that's the wrong. That, that's that's the wrong foundation. Because you can be popular one day and unpopular the next day. You could have a good job one day and and a bad job. That's the wrong foundation. 
please don't build on your beauty because you might, uh, you may not be able to pinch an inch now, but you keep living, you're going to pick up a little weight here and there. Your hair may be silky and black and brown now, but keep living, except that be for weave, you're, you're going to have some gray come through every now and then. Wrong foundation. We cannot build on our education. We cannot build on our stamina in the community. We cannot build on what po political party we ascribe to. We cannot build on our religiosity or our denominations. We cannot build on our finances and all those kind of stuff. But the old hymn says, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. Somebody ought to say, on Christ, the solid rock I stand. All of the ground is sinking sand. I said I'd give you a scripture at the end. Jude 23, 24. 25. Now unto him which is able to keep us from falling and present us faultless to the throne of his glory to the only wise God our Savior. Be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, not just temporarily, but even forevermore. And I came to tell you that God is the one that can put your blocks back together. And I don't care if you lost it in the area of emotions. I don't care if it fell in the area of employment. I don't care if your blocks fail in the area of strength. I don't care if your block fail in the area of finance or health or relationship or faith. We serve a God that is able to do exceeding and abundantly above all we can ask or think. Let's pray together. Father, I thank you now that every one of us viewing has had some block falling experiences. And I pray God that you allow us to have the kind of faith to know that you can put us back together again. The old poem said Humpty Dumpty sat on the wall and Humpty Dumpty had a great fall and all the king's horses, all the king's men couldn't put Humpty together again. One of our problems is we're fooling with the king's horses and the king's men. We should be looking to the king. Help us in this crisis. Help us, those that are furloughed and those that are unemployed and those that are between paychecks. Help us to look to the hills from whence cometh our help for we know our help cometh from you. Now, now, wherever your people are, visit them. Visit them with a word of hope. Visit them with strength. Deposit into them what they need to make it through this journey. And we will not wait till the battle is over. But we'll praise you now because you inhabit the praises of your people. And one writer said, when praises go up, blessings come down. Now bless your people everywhere in the name of Jesus. And we thank you for it. And we know that it is so in Jesus' name. Amen. Wherever you are, just give God praise and just thank him that he's able to pull us back up together again. You know, the Bible says Potter had a vessel and, and uh, we were the clay, but the potter molded us and put us back together again. If you're, not, if you're watching me and you're not 100% sure that if you died tonight, you'd go to heaven, there's a simple prayer that you can pray with me and you will be saved. You ain't gotta run down no aisle, jump over no pews, 
but you'll know that you've been born again. And it's always better to know him and not need him than to need him and not know him. So in your home, on your job, in the car, just say this simple prayer with me. Dear Lord Jesus, come into my life. I'm sorry for my sins. I accept you now as my Lord and personal Savior. Thank you for saving me. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. And if you said that prayer, you are now saved. Let the Lord lead you to a Bible-believing church where you can follow with baptism and grow in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I'm believing God with you. This has been Bishop Larry D. Trotter, Sweet Holy Spirit Church. You don't have a church here in Chicago. You can come over here where the table is spread and the feast of the Lord is going on. And I want to tell you that rock bottom don't mean nothing to God because God made the rock and what's to come for you is better than what's been. I want you to meet us on Thursday morning for prayer at 7 o'clock. Just sign on in and meet us again on Sunday for our services streaming until they lift the ban at 8 o'clock. And may the Lord bless you and may you have a wonderful day on purpose. God bless. What's up, sweet Holy Spirit families of friends? This is Ty Rashawn, and I'm your favorite worship leaders. Oh, you know the rest. Let's get to the business at hand. Let's talk about giving. As you already know, in this time of crisis, our commitment to pledge into the house of God is more important than it has ever been. So let's talk about ways that you can continue to support this ministry. You can still do it with cash and checks in person at the church between the hours of 9 and 11 each Sunday. Now let's talk about apps. You can give via Givelify. You can go to your Google Play or your App Store. Once you have downloaded Givelify, then you can search Sweet Holy Spirit and give that way. You can also do it with Cash App by going to dollar sign Sweet Holy Spirit. You can also do it with PayPal by going to paypal.me forward slash SHS Church. If you need more information, we invite you to call the church at 773-768-HOLY. That is 773-768-HOLY. We also invite you to visit our website for more information as well at www.sweetholyspiritonline.org. As I say all the time, Thank you for whatever part you play in making this church successful.